Poetry provides an opening for creative people to express themselves in a way that prose and narrative just don't. It adds rich color and texture to a person's creative endeavors, allowing them a sense of vulnerability that is both pure and artistic. And sometimes, even the simplest of poetic styles can bring forth... May the force be with you. What are you doing here? I am here to wish everyone happy stop. Just stop, stop, stop. Your scene isn't until after the opening credits. Who are you? Well, I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones, and uh, welcome to the newest episode of The Right Way. <laughs> Welcome back to The Right Way, where we talk book recs, author interviews, and creative writing tips. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on new videos just like this one. I have a great episode for you, but before I get into this month's content, I'd like to share a few announcements with you. Last week was both Star Wars Day and Free Comic Book Day. I was down at DJ's Collectible Shop in downtown Hanford, for the festivities, signing and selling copies of my fantasy series, The Archives of Ysink Ran. It was a huge amount of fun. I'll have footage from the event in the June episode, but I wanted to jump on to more news. During Author Awareness April, I mentioned that I was restarting my writing workshops. I thought they weren't going to start until this month, but I actually held my first class, An Introduction to Writing Fiction, on Saturday, April the 6th. Now, if you want to catch a replay of that for taking notes and that kind of purpose, I live stream the entire event on Instagram. Actually, I live streamed it on YouTube. So if you want to check out that uh, workshop, you can find it right up here. I have another one coming up next Saturday, May 18th, from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. For that event, I'll be discussing how to create characters for your story. And another big announcement is that we are two months away from the second annual Writies Awards. Last year, I had voting open for my viewers, my guests, and their loved ones to vote on who would win for the best guest host, the best author interview, and the best marathon interview. Each winner received a $15 Amazon digital gift card. That same prize will be available again this season as well. Voting won't be open until mid-July, but I wanted to make sure to put it on your radar. And lastly, if you missed any part of this year's Author Awareness April Marathon, you can find each of the four episodes in this handy-dandy playlist right up here above my head. Now, let's get on with this month's episode. Back in March, I featured Maven Knight author Matthew Romeo as my guest host. He provided you with a list of his favorite sci-fi and fantasy books. We took a break last month for Author Awareness April, but this month I've asked my War of the Stars co-host, John Mark Tolley, to provide his top 10 reading recommendations. I hope you enjoy John's suggestions. Hello everyone, and my name is Mark Tolley. I am the host of War of the Stars, and I am here today to go through my top 10 all-time favorite books of all time, starting with uh, Freedom for Cheetah by Arthur Catherall. This is just, just a fun book. Uh, it's a, a glimpse into a world that 
you know, we don't really hear much about tw early, early 20th century India following the ventures of a cheetah that was kept in captivity as a hunt as a hunting cheetah. And it's a young adult book, but it also holds a special place in my heart as one of the first novels I ever read um, multiple times. Uh, just a really, really fun book. Number nine is uh, Moby Dick by Arthur Cap by Herman Mer or Melville. Um, one of the best opening lines of all time uh, with Call Me Ishmael. Um, just a classic American novel. Uh, number eight is Call of the Wild by Jack London. Again, a classic American novel. I almost added the uh, White Fang, but I just feel like this is a a little bit slightly better book. I mean, Adventures of Buck, uh, a, a domesticated dog taken from his home. It's just again, it gives you a glimpse into a into a different world. That being the Klondike Rush of the eighteen nineties, which for the time it was written had just happened. So, but for us living today, it gives us definitely gives us a glimpse into a different time. Number seven is Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. It's just a fun book. You know, Peter's one of those characters. I feel that she's just so easy to root for. Even when he's messing with Mr. Potter's garden and everything like that, it's just so fun. He's a very likable rogue, roguish character. Number six is I, Jedi Bane, Mark Stackpole, uh, Adventures of Corrin Horn. What I liked about this book was the style. It's a style that's not very common, I don't feel, in novels. Uh, a novel is written in first person. It gave it a unique feel, a feel much like a like your Regan diary. Number five is The Romulan Way by Diane Duane and Peter Morewood. Um, what I liked about this book is the world building. Basically creating a um, a new language, a world and history of the of this planet, the Romulans, you know, really giving them a, a good backstory and you know, taking a whole section of the book to do this uh, that's separate from the novel, which was I thought was really cool, and even giving a dictionary at the end of the book uh, for all these different Raihansu world words is War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, much like I, Jedi, again, uh, written in first person. Um, sometimes H.G. Wells, to me, can be hard to read just because of the style, he, he seems to write different styles for each book. Uh, but, I mean, popularizing science fiction and really, you know, almost inventing the genre. Um, I know there's a few other people around during that time, but H. Shoe Wells was one of the forerunners of early science fiction and everything that we have for sci-fi, in my opinion, we owe to H. G. Wells. Is the true separate core um, by Kathy Tyers, one of my favorite Star Wars aliens that never shows up again in the Sisaruki. Um, just very vicious, just almost bored like in the way they went about things. Um, a really good book, really fun, really cool the way everything works out. Number two is Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. Uh, this is the book that made me a Star Wars fanatic. Uh, this was the turning point for me from this being someone who thought the movies were cool, liked it, liked it to I want to learn everything there is about this universe. This was this book. Timothy Zahn, um, the first of the Thrawn trilogies, just really re reignited the Star Wars craze of that time period. And, uh, and of course, number one, Michael Crichton's Jurassic Park. I don't know how many times I've read this book. I don't know how many times I watched the movie. Uh, uh, this is one of those unique times where the movie and book, are, in my opinion, are equally good. Uh, I love the movie. I love the book. You know, just really changed the game in so many ways. And it's 
essentially a retelling of Frankenstein. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Those were my top 10 favorite books of all time. Uh, until next time, I will see you guys later. A big thank you goes out to John for being this month's guest host. If you're interested in picking up one of the books mentioned in his segment, you can find that list of titles and their ISBN numbers down in the video description. Now, if you've got a love for Star Wars, and who doesn't, and you want to connect with our podcast, all the information for War of the Stars is featured down in the video description. We are just finishing up our review of The Bad Batch Season 3, or the final season, however you want to word that, and it's always fun to connect with new listeners. This season, I've been talking about how to write poetry, but so far, none of the authors that I've gotten to interview have been poets until now. I connected with this month's guest uh, author uh, through Instagram, and I knew this would be the perfect opportunity to jump back into a standard episode. So please join me in welcoming indie writer, Nerd the Poet. Hey, Dominic, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Hey, how's it going, Garrett? It is going. So tell me about your work and what it is that you write. Right. So I am a uh, three-time published author from Los Angeles, California, currently living in Washington, D.C. And my poetry is, in a sense, lyric poetry. Sometimes I do other forms, prose, uh, free verse. But mainly my poetry is what I like to call lifestyle poetry. I talk about my life, things that I've experienced, uh, my interactions with others. Uh, but things that are very thought provoking and uh, introspective. How'd you how'd you get into doing poetry? A lot of writers talk about being influenced by, um, you know, a, a particular book or a particular author. What what got you into doing poetry? So a unique thing about myself is that I actually started off uh, emceeing. You know, I started off writing rhymes, and how I would write is I would have a certain rhythm in you know in my head and then I will find the music that matches you know that that rhythm mm -hmm. um, then I started to be exposed to poetry when I was attending California State University Long Beach uh, getting my degree in English creative writing and I noticed that there were some similarities uh, to what, what it is that, that I was doing so I said okay well let me try to uh, accustom my, my style to these forms and it was uh a lot of transferable skills there um also I, I like to to you know push and challenge myself with things that you know i feel like i'm capable of doing but i just haven't really gotten into um as far as this, the spoken word piece um uh, listen to a lot of hip-hop albums such as uh you know from the roots or uh talib kwali common some of those MCs were poets also, and they either did poetry on their albums or had poets of the uh, early 2000s on there. And I took a real interest to that. And there's a, a, a form of rap without a beat called acapella, right? So I, I, I kind of was like, okay, well, this is kind of like the acapella form, like lyrics that kind of stand on their own don't need choruses don't need repetitive you know verses and, and hooks and things like that so uh the summation of, of all those things kind of led me towards pursuing poetry on a, a professional level that's really cool that's really cool but are there any other published poets or authors out there that uh particularly speak to you as a writer yeah so i like a lot of james baldwin um, I like a lot of uh, County Cullen, Langston Hughes, mm -hmm. uh, currently um, Javon Johnson, Rudy Francisco. Uh, those will probably be the, the main ones. Um, Tupac is my, my main influence. And he actually um, does have a published uh, body of work. Um, but those, those are 
the the artists and uh, poets that I currently am listening to and inspired by. What has been one of the biggest uh, challenges or one of the biggest obstacles that you've dealt with with uh, the writing or the publication or any of those elements? I would say the biggest challenge has been it's between promotion and editing. Mm-hmm. Uh, finding finding a, a good editor is difficult because you know you don't want someone who edits too well and then you kind of lose the, the the strength of your of your work and it was interesting when i was uh getting my current book published through a small publisher day eight you know i was going back and forth with the the editor and it was like you said this did you mean this and i was like no that's what i meant and <laughs> they was like what it sounds like so on and so forth and i was like okay I, I had to wrestle with myself and think about where do I want this work to reach out? You know, like how far do I want it to reach out versus how authentic do I want it to be? And I think that's a decision that we have to make as writers. Uh, do do we want to have that impact to where a large amount of people can pick this up? Or do we want to just be you know, household names and and good to, you know, a selective uh, audience. Is is there a particular topic that you tend to discuss more in your in your poetry? I tend to talk about love and relationships. So in my first book, The Love Song of Dean Erd McDonald, which was about my experiences um, with like kind of college age you know, interactions and situationships that that I had. Uh, That's what I felt the more emotional and strong about. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of where I started. And I was actually inspired by a T.S. Eliot poem uh, called The Love Song J. Alfred Prufrock. And I think everybody can understand heartbreak. Everybody can understand infatuation. Everybody can understand emotional betrayal. So those are the things that I like to talk about the most and then i get into you know social justice um you know i get into nature i think i'm actually also getting into that now more as i'm maturing (laughs) so like i kind of understand a robert frost poem a little bit more now than i used to when i was in my 20s so if you were to give any advice to other would-be authors especially those who are looking at becoming poets what advice would you give them? I would say prepare prepare yourself to share yourself. <laughs> um, it's it's so interesting. Uh, writers can be so introverted, but have these perspectives that you know are are, are necessary, and I would say maybe even world changing, definitely perspective changing. And so, you, you know, people want to know. What led you to those thoughts? What observations did you have? What things did you go through and experience? And, you know, if you're not able to talk about them, that's kind of doing a a, a disservice, you know. Um, Now, unless you're using a pseudo name and just want to have stuff out there and, you know, have people guess or have representation, like that's another thing as well. But, um, you know, I, I would say prepare yourself to, talk about what it is that you are doing and then for your work to be critiqued and edited and you know chopped down um i find that's a lot that's a hurdle with a lot of our writers and what is is interesting about the transition of uh you know me going from a hip-hop artist to to writing is that that's what we lead with like we lead with talking about ourselves we lead with uh, just that expression and, and so on and so forth. So it's uh, very interesting to to see uh, uh, how how that could be a challenge. And also, you're going to have to invest in yourself. You know, if you're self-publishing, you know, there's a certain amount of, uh, you know, money that you're going to have to put in. It's not, it's not a lot. It's not a ridiculous amount, but it is an investment, um, even if it's not just getting the print, copies of the book uh it's uh you know getting book covers then sometimes you might have to get that digitally drafted by someone um 
also the the promotion and there's a lot of paid advertised things going on right now because unfortunately these social media platforms aren't giving you at they're not giving you 100 percent access to your following uh not a lot of people know that either so uh you're gonna have to take advantage of these facebook ads and, and instagram ads especially if you aren't comfortable with talking about yourself uh a lot so so Dominic, we're coming up on on time here, but how can people get a hold of your work? How can they they connect with you through social media? And uh, what's the best way to for them to get copies of your books into their hands? Right. So I have in all my links, which is uh, allmylinks.com slash nerd the poet. You can also find uh, me on Facebook at Dominic Nerd McDonald. Um, I have one book through Day 8 Publishing, I'd Rather Be Called a Nerd. Uh, two are, uh, one is on Amazon, and the other one is on uh, Lulu.com. And I have to say the name of the online publisher because I get more <laughs> money if it's by them and, and not through Amazon. But, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome, Dominic. Thank you very much for being on the show. It has been my pleasure to to be able to have this conversation with you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Now, if you're interested in picking up copies of Nerd the Poet's work or connect with him on social media, you can find those links down in the video description. Welcome back for our deep dive discussion into writing poetry. Back in March, we discussed how to write the ever-somber elegy. This month, we are jumping back into a less technical but far more thematic style of poetry, the acrostic. That's across. Across from where? An acrostic is a style of poetry that writes out the theme or focus of the poem in some fashion, typically vertically, and then using the letters of that focus word in each of the lines of the poem. The history, like the ode or the elegy, come from a Greek root, meaning at the end of the line. Now, while the first use of an early was from an early Erythraean poem, the Book of Psalms in the Bible actually provides an example of an acrostic done in a Hebrew style. Psalm 119, which is the longest chapter in both the entire book and the entire Bible, clocks in at a whopping 176 verses, which are broken into 22 sections, each section corresponding in order with the sequential letter in the Hebrew syllabary. Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and so on. And the first letter of the first word in each section starts with that letter. We don't actually see this in English translations of the Bible, of course, but if you were to have a side-by-side -side comparison between the English and the Hebrew translations, you would actually see this pattern play out. There's something noteworthy to be said about the beauty of ancient Near East poetic styles, which we'll come back to in another video this season. That being said, I'm going to provide you with four steps for writing an acrostic. These tips come from and have been adapted from an online article that I have linked below in the video description. So step one, choose a subject or theme for your poem. You want to have a specific topic in mind the more specific, the better. If you're writing the poem as a gift for someone, use that person's name as the focus and use each letter in the name to highlight a trait about them that you want to elevate or praise. Or if it is a topic that elicits a different emotion, write in response to that emotion in the topic and use each line to be specific in how you express those feelings. My topic for my example is fatherhood which I'm going to write vertically in my paper. Step two, brainstorm words and phrases related to the subject. Drum up a list of at least 10 of those connections, with, like you know, which emotion it makes you feel, its appearance, its importance, any additional sensory details. For my list, I'm going with words and phrases that are intrinsic to my relationship with my son, as well as drawing inspiration from the relationship I have with my own father. Step three, pick a word to use for the first letter of, of each of the lines. 
this is the typical way you can write the poem, but it's not the only way. If you plan it right, you can actually orient the letters of the theme word at the end of the lines, or in the middle, or running diagonally across the poem. Once you feel confident with the structure, play around with it and have fun. For my poem, I'm, I'm going to be simple. I'm going to have my focus word running vertically through the beginning or the front of the poem. Finally, step four. Write the other lines of the poem. This is where you apply the words and phrases that you brainstormed in step two to the actual writing of the poem itself. Making sure that each line starts with the correct letter from the focus word or incorporates it the way you want it to be incorporated. It's important to understand that while acrostics can feel remedial or too simple, they aren't just the poems of amateurs. Professionals like Edgar Allan Poe use this style. Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, incorporated such a poem in his book which used the protagonist's name. And so, here's my example. Focusing my time and energy is all that it takes to give my son the love he needs and deserves. His innocent wonder and sense of adventure entertains me. He is so curious and imaginative. Rather than stopping him, I help him explore his interests in safe ways only when I can help him understand the obvious difference between fact and fiction only for him to say, Daddy, can we go to find Godzilla at the ocean? Now this is the point where I provide you with a writing prompt. I'm going to keep it simple. Choose a focus word that's important to you. To you. And write it vertically where each letter will be the start of a line. Once you have it written and revised, share it in the comments section. Send it to me on Instagram or X at gkj underscore publishing or email me a copy at gkj publishing at gmail.com. I'd love to offer you feedback. Hey, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications when new content is released. Make sure to tune in next week for my live stream and I'll be back on June 15th with a new live stream plus a new full episode on June 22nd because we're you know kind of changing it up this summer. I'll see you then.